Wow, my glasses are steaming up. It's so hot in here. Do you see that? Wow. My cat is just hanging out here in the background. Oh, hi, Benny. Aren't you sweet? Oh, <laughs> what a beautiful addition to this video. <laughs> I love it. Okay, <laughs> let's try this again. Welcome back, Bibliophiles. My name is Jill, and I am the book bully. And I am here today, after a lot of ruckus with my cat, trying to set up the camera, to do a bit of a naughty book haul. Um, I say naughty because my friend Aaron and I decided that we were going to go on a book buying ban uh, for most of September, August, September. And the premise was that we wouldn't buy more books until we had read 10 books that we already own on our shelves that we haven't yet read. Um, he and I both keep track in a spreadsheet, a shared spreadsheet, because we are book bosom buddies, uh, about all the books we've bought for, throughout the year and how much they cost and what we've read. So we were both feeling a little bit like, well, he was feeling a bit like I shouldn't put myself in this because, uh, I was going along for moral support. Uh, he was feeling that he wanted to read some of the books that he'd own instead of keep buying more. So I said, yeah, let's do it. Like I, I absolutely uh, should also participate <laughs> in this. And uh, I was gung-ho, I, I made a separate spreadsheet. Like I was there for this. And then, you know what happened? September happened. There was a lot of books that came out that I wanted to read. And so I bought a bunch of them and here they are. <laughs> the first book I bought was Finding Cooper by Stacy Matson. Now, Stacy is a friend of mine. I went to university with her in uh, British Columbia, and this is her fourth novel, I believe. It's a middle grade. She uh, is published by Scholastic, and this is her best book so far. This is a story about um, a kid named Cooper, and his grandfather has Alzheimer's, and he has this suspicion based on something his grandfather says that his grandfather might have been the notorious criminal D.B. Cooper. So as a kid obsessed with X-Files, he decides he's going to solve this mystery and he tries to figure out uh, who D.B. Cooper was and if actually it is his grandfather. And this is such a good book and I'm so glad I picked it up uh, when it came out because it was exactly what I needed to read at the time. So, you know, things are difficult for Cooper. You know, he's having some challenges with his friends. His parents fight a lot and he's afraid they're going to get divorced and he doesn't really understand what's going on. You know, his grandfather is, is ill and he um, is frustrated with trying to understand how to talk to him and get more information. Um, so this mystery that he's trying to solve really... Uh, in Cooper's mind is how he's going to fix everything and I just think this is a heartwarming tale I think the complexity of these relationships is um, presented in such a way that anyone could really enjoy the story and I, I was talking to Stacy after I read it and I said what I think is so great about this book is that you know I, I was reading it and I was thinking, oh, I can see a 10-year-old reading this and not feeling like they were being talked down to. And I can see a 15-year-old reading this and feeling like they can see themselves in this. And I read this and I thought it was just a delight and just, and like I could see the complexity of these relationships. And so um, I picked this up, I read it as soon as I got it and I absolutely loved it. So if you are looking for a middle grade or you want something like really, oh, also he has a dog named uh, Dana Scully. <laughs> That's who the dog on the front is. Um, so yeah, uh, loved this book and I'm so glad I picked it up. So then I had a pre-order to pick up <laughs> Doc's new Brightport. It's a little bit different than <laughs> Finding Cooper. This is the 10,000 page, no, 10,000 10, pages. Can you imagine? <laughs> How big would a 10,000 page book be? Like 10 of these. That would be enormous. You could never read it. Okay. <laughs> no, this book is 1,000 pages. Um, I pre-ordered this and I've just started reading it. Uh, I'm like, you know, not even 100 pages in. This was a pre-order for me, so I went in to sort of pick this up uh, on the day that it came out. And it happened to come out in Canada on the same day as The Testaments was released. So when I went in to pick up uh, Duck's Newburyport, I saw this on display and I was fully not going to buy this book. Um, Cause I could, I was kind of like, oh, I pre-ordered Duck's Newburyport. I also had pre-ordered Finding Cooper. So I was like, I don't need to buy um, another book because like I haven't broken my um my book buying ban um but I saw this not only did they have this book on for like 20 bucks or whatever it was <laughs> for, like their discount but they also were giving away free tote bags if you bought the testaments so I bought the testaments <laughs> and 
uh, I don't regret it because I've already read it and I enjoyed it. I just like wanted to be part of the hype train, I think, and yeah, like guilty as charged. So by this point, I had already broken my book buying ban, but I was like, okay, these are like, you know, big deals. <laughs> they were anything to justify, right? Um, these are books I pre-ordered, like, it's fine. But then the next two books I really have no justification for. Well, the next one of them. So I have this kind of online book club with two of my friends from BC that we read, you know, every couple of months we'll read a book together. And the book we decided on was The Familiars, which, um, I don't have at this moment, but it is at the um, post office waiting for me to pick up tomorrow. So I ordered that online and I was on Book Depository ordering it because I liked the British cover better than the Canadian cover. And then I decided, well, why not pick up a book <laughs> that I've had my eye on for a little while and it's not that much more. <laughs> so I ordered The Stopping Places by Damien Labas. I think it's pronounced Labas, not Laba. Damien Labas is a uh, gypsy traveler and this is uh, him kind of going through different places in Britain that are uh, historically like gypsy traveler spots. I, I believe that's what it is. But I had seen this um, talked about on Jen Campbell's channel and I just love this idea so much and I also love the cover. Although mine came a bit bent, so book depository. Qu'est-ce que c'est? But yeah, so I picked this up too, uh, being able to ju <laughs> justify that uh, it's okay, I needed to get two of them in the same order, even though they didn't even come together. But this is what I wanted to read while I was reading Duck's Newbury Report to kind of break up the um, kind of the the lengthiness of that book. To be honest, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't even started it yet. So at this point, I've just given up 100% on my book buying ban and I just started buying books. <laughs> so I bought Late Breaking by K.D. Miller. This is a short story collection that's on the long list for the Gillard Prize 2019. I picked this up at my favorite bookstore in Ottawa called Perfect Books. And I have to say I'm so glad I picked it up. I have already read it. I flew through this book. This is a collection of short stories. Each one is based off the a painting of Alex Colville. And Alex Colville, if you don't know, is a uh, Canadian painter. He paints a lot of um, like realistic human bodies, is how I would put it. And uh, he has a very distinct style that's a bit... Oh, I'm not an art critic. Why am I trying to do this? But I, these are the kind of things he paints. And I love his paintings. I saw an exhibit of his here in Ottawa a couple of years ago, and I absolutely loved it. And this collection, which I'll talk more about in another video, but um, this is one of my favorite books of the whole year. One of my favorite short story collections ever. Maybe my favorite. I don't know that, about that yet, but um, I absolutely loved it. So I do not regret buying this at all. <laughs> so now all bets are off. And uh, yesterday I went to volunteer with the uh, Friends of the Ottawa Public Library Association. Uh, they have a big sale once a month. I volunteer with them uh, every sale. It's called the Mammoth Sale. Um, I'll leave the link below if you live in Ottawa and, or you live around Ottawa and you want to come to an amazing, amazing book sale. Um, the quality of the books are incredible. The prices are amazing. Um, books between a dollar to like, you know, three dollars for super great condition, high quality books and not just library cast stuff, but also like donations and stuff. So this is just a plug for the library sale because all the money goes back to the library and um, I volunteered there for a couple of years and I've absolutely loved it. So, and I'll show you what I got there. I got some incredible books for like all of these books I got were $10. So go to your library sale. Uh, if you don't live in Ottawa, go to your local library sale. Just like support the library and get some great books. Um, so the first book I got was Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. Uh, to be honest with you, I am 0% interested in this book, um, but this cover is gorgeous. And I also feel like there's been this huge movement about Greek retellings and um, I have very little interest in myths or in fairy tales and that kind of thing. Like I'm not a big uh, fairy tale retelling kind of reader, but I felt like if I was gonna give it a whirl, I feel like I need to kind of get on the train a little bit. Uh, this might be a place to start and it was $1.50. So uh, I figured why not? Like if someday I feel like this is the, the one to dive into, I got it here. Then I picked up The Nix by Nathan Hill. This is a book that I have seen on the shelves for years, uh, used bookshelves in the bookstore, and I've always been drawn to it. Maybe it's just like the bold colors and the font, and like, I just think the cover is really great. Um, this is a story about a son who's trying to understand the truth about his mother, I think is the premise. Uh, but I just love the cover, and I've never seen um, this book at the library sale in this condition, and so I was like, 
someday this might be the one for me. <laughs> so I picked that up as well. Then I picked up a new Agatha Christie because I absolutely love these editions of them. I have a couple already that I've picked up at the sale. Um, this is uh, one I haven't seen before. This is called Appointment with Death. And I've started watching Mara at Books Like Whoa and she is a huge Agatha Christie fan and she did a whole video about like ranking her favorite of like all of the Agatha Christie books, but it made me really want to read more Agatha Christie. I mean, I, I've read a couple and I read one every summer or a couple every summer. I also just want to keep collecting for my collection. So picked that up. And then I also picked up this great edition of The Hound of the Baskervilles by uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, obviously a Sherlock Holmes mystery. I uh, haven't read a lot of Sherlock Holmes mysteries. I think I've read I've read a couple of short stories and I've read uh, A Study in Scarlet, but I am a massive fan of the TV show. Anyone who knows me <laughs> has known that I had a very hardcore obsession for a long time about that show uh, before season three came out. Let's put it, let's put that caveat there. Um, but I think Simon from Savage Reads had held up this cover at one point and I just thought this cover was so gorgeous. And I think um, I might read this around Halloween. Uh, I'm not really a big horror or like scary book reader, but uh, I think this is like the right level of like fear for me <laughs> at Halloween. And also like um, I've watched the show so much and I've watched this episode, season two, episode two, uh, you know, multiple, I mean, I don't know, 30, 40 times or whatever it is. I might watch it again today, who knows? It's probably time that I actually read the book. I also picked up a copy of An Ocean of Minutes by Thea Lim. Now this book, I think won some kind of award, might've been like, Canada Reads or it might have been some kind of it won some kind of Canadian award maybe something some other kind of award I can't remember to be honest, to be honest with you but it did win something or it's been like <laughs> nominated for something um but this one is a signed copy which um I love a signed book and uh I also love a French flap like I know lots of people don't but I'm a huge fan I know I have some friends of mine who've read this and haven't loved this um but I can't remember who they were and if they're people that I trust their recommendations to be quite honest. But I picked it up anyway because it still interests me and um, honestly I just love that cover. And a signed book, can't say no. And I've saved the best for last. I found a copy of The Hearts Invisible Furies by John Boyne. If you have watched my mid-year slash my two-thirds year freakout tag, you know that my favorite author this year and maybe of all time is John Boyne and I have fallen head over heels for him this year. I actually read this book last year. I got it from the library on my e-reader and I've been wanting to buy a copy of this book but I I'm hesitant to buy books I've already read if I want to read more books by him and I just kind of haven't picked it up. So when I got this home I realized it was um, an ARC, an advanced reader's copy, and I was wondering for people who had ARCs before, I've never actually had an ARC, I uh, I got one one time and I can't remember what book it was and I got rid of it because I didn't like it. <laughs> um, so if um, if you are someone who's them, can, can you let me know like what is actually different about between the two. I'm just curious, but I'm happy to have this. I don't uh, like, it doesn't matter to me if it's an arc or not. Um, I just want to have it on my shelf because I'm sure I'll go back to it at some point. Uh, but this was such a good find, $1.50 again at the library sale in great condition. Let me know if you've read arcs or if you get arcs, how different they really are from the final copy. I'm just curious. So overall, I'm actually quite happy that I broke my book buying ban because I got some excellent things and I've already read a couple and have loved them. So I feel like, you know, really in the grand scheme, uh, I could spend money on worse things. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Um, let me know in the comments below if you have read any of these, is any of these that you're excited about. I am reading Duck's Newburyport right now and I'm vlogging the experience, so stay tuned for that. I have no idea how long it's gonna take me. I'm like 100 pages in and it's been a couple of days. So, um, who knows, it might be three months before the book get, that vlog gets up. I'm gonna turn my air conditioning on because it's 10 million degrees and I'm sweating. Thanks for watching, I'll see you later. Bye. It is the second day of September. No, that is not true. The Testaments, that's the back of the Testaments.